Here it is, we've got it, the new OnePlus open folding phone. Actually, I've got a couple of them in different colors here. And you know it's OnePlus when you see the red and black iconic packaging. We also see on the front of the package here that the Hasselblad partnership is intact. Now, when I showed you guys that kind of early look at the new OnePlus folding phone, I was kind of restricted on what I could show off in that video. Some of the design elements were kind of obscured. This, on the other hand, is the full deal. This is the retail packaging. We're gonna learn what's inside the box, what the device looks like. This one here, 16 gigs RAM, 512 gigs storage, and in emerald dust. The other package, I've got Voyager Black, otherwise the specification is the same. Something interesting I discovered, the emerald dust is slightly heavier than the Voyager Black. So something to do with that finish, which gives you that nice color and texture, actually gives you a little bit more weight as well. And then on the Voyager Black, you've got this, what they're calling vegan leather texture on the back. But let's start with the green version. Now, obviously this is OnePlus's first folding device, and I'm happy to see more players in the folding device game. Obviously, this means more options for the customer. Look at the unboxing experience, lovely stuff. They've of course got their saying in the center there, never settle. And here is the device. And yes, it is nice and slim. Now we can show you the camera module and we can also appreciate the legitimate 3X zoom lens that's on there, which not currently an option on other folding smartphones. We see it on other flagship smartphones, but not on other folding smartphones. The other exciting part is on the main camera sensor where they're using Sony's Litia sensor. It is a pixel stack sensor and OnePlus claims it'll give similar performance to Sony's one inch sensor. I think they didn't want to compromise on cameras even though it was a folding phone. Now, something else you're going to notice the way that this glass sits over top of the lenses, it sits over top of all the different camera units creating one flush surface. They're calling it a depth vacuum, a legitimate gap in there between the two on purpose to kind of simulate the experience of like a luxury watch or something. You can see the components underneath, but they are protected by this overlay that sits on top and it gives you a flush finish rather than each individual camera unit bulging independently. The flash occupies the very top corner. Here we have a look at their external display. The entire device is IPX4, so it will be splashed resistant and they put a lot of work into the hinge in order to eliminate components in the past these hinges can be north of a hundred plus pieces they've got the number down to 69 total parts they've also worked on the construction of the device and the materials in use in order to make it more lightweight oneplus claims that this device is basically the same weight as an iphone 14 pro max now obviously the 14 pro max is a heavy device as far as non-folding devices devices are concerned, but it's still impressive to have a complete folding device coming in at the same weight as a non-folding one, which is what they were able to achieve here. So maybe it's a good time to talk about cameras. The main sensor, 48 megapixel, that is that Lydia pixel stacked sensor. And then we've also got the 3X zoom is a 70 millimeter focal distance, which is good for portrait photos. And then the ultra wide comes in at 14 millimeters, which is actually kind of nice. I'm curious to see how this stacks up to other flagships not just other folding phones. Uh, we have our fingerprint scanner over here on the right. The alert slider is back and it's larger than it has been previously. A lot of people were upset when OnePlus toyed with the idea of no alert slider. Well, here it is and it is tactile, it is textured and it is satisfying. We have our volume rocker, which is also quite large and that sits right beside the alert slider. USB type C on the bottom of the device, that is going to recharge from one to 100% this battery here in around 42 two minutes according to OnePlus. So you've got 67 watt Super VOOC charging and the battery size is just over 4,800 milliamp hours in a dual cell setup to allow for that extremely speedy recharge. The other thing I should mention, you can see some of the speaker grills here. They do have a triple speaker spatial setups. They're also talking about from a media consumption standpoint, how the audio experience is gonna be. The other thing I should mention here, I was curious how the display would look on top of the hinge portion. I mean, every folding phone needs to fold somewhere. This variety, like we've seen seen so many different approaches to hinge construction. Each one has its benefits and drawbacks, but this agenda recently has been to diminish the significance or the appearance of 
a crease when you've got it unfolded. And considering the fact that I don't have the screen turned on right now, I'd say it's actually pretty impressive what they've been capable of achieving. Front facing camera, when you have the display unfolded, it's in the top right corner here. That's gonna be a 20 megapixel capable camera. Also in the package, we're gonna have a charger included, which is a nice touch in 2023. These are increasingly uncommon and it's not just any charger, it's that 67 watt capable Super VOOC charger. So very rapid recharge, not just for your folding phone, but you're gonna be able to use this thing a lot of other devices considering it's 67 watt capable. Oh, they've even given us a case in here. It kind of ties in to, look at the way they package that. That's interesting, it slides off. It's a plastic case, but it actually has a kind of pleasing texture to it. It is almost like that faux leather type of experience. We do have a piece for the front as well. This one looks like it's using an adhesive. Often with these folding devices, I'll just put the rear portion on and I actually find that putting the rear portion on helps me to open and close the device because it gives me a ridge to grip onto with my thumbs. I like this green. It's kind of, it's almost like I mean, the green I'm wearing. It's kind of like an army green. Very elegant unboxing experience. I, it looks like we've got a couple of other elements here. We do. We have our iconic charge cable, a USB A to C, white and red to go with the OnePlus theme. And then just, a, oh, maybe more than just paperwork. There is a SIM tool and red cable glove. A little membership card and stickers as well are in there. So that is the Emerald Dusk Green. And then over here, we have your other option, which is the Voyager Black. And I'm curious about this texture, what the texture is gonna feel like. The OnePlus logo, a little more prominent on this model. It kind of stands out a little bit more with the mirrored finish in the center. So this has texture meant to mimic leather. This is gonna be your more executive look. I actually like this. I think I would probably select for this one. I don't know about like long-term looks and durability, but immediately it's resistant to fingerprints, a little bit more tactile feedback when you're holding the device. Also, it's interesting what this color change does to the appearance of the uh, camera section. It blends a little bit more on the black one. But you guys let me know down in the comments, would you select the Voyager Black or Emerald Dusk? The design situation carries through as well to the frame of the device. With the Emerald setup, we have this glossy sort of polished look around the perimeter and on the frame. On the Voyager Black, instead we have this brushed or matte looking finish. Strong haptics there as I'm playing around with the alert slider. The charger is identical as expected and the case is different. Very similar to the texture of the device itself. These two are somewhat interchangeable. A little bit of a raised lip around the camera module. What's nice about their camera setup here is typing anywhere down on the lower portion of the display in the closed format isn't a ton of wobble. You can make it wobble if you go looking for it, but you're not really tapping as much up there as you are down here. This thing is thin. In its unfolded setup, it is 5.8 millimeters. Folded up, this here is listed at 11.7 millimeters. The exterior display is 6.31 inches, 2K resolution, 120 hertz, and a peak brightness of 2800. Internal display obviously significantly bigger than external coming in at 7.82 inches, resolution 2K, 120 hertz one more time, and then you've also got 2800 peak nits of brightness, so that's on the inside and on the outside. There is a lot of contrast coming off of this screen. I'm noticing that for a refresh, we're currently in the auto select mode, although we can lock it via this high setting. You can also toggle it back as usual, conserve battery. Mo is asking me to bring the brightness down. He says, that's too hot for the camera. I'm saying I'm trying to show off the nits. Getting a nice little haptic on the interface as I adjust my brightness level. So the only reason we're bringing this down is so that Mo can see it better on the camera. It was blasting our exposure, which shows you just how bright the display is. And when the display is on, that central scene really shrinks. If you're sitting straight in front of this with a bright display, they have definitely pulled this screen with enough tension to really diminish that seam. That's pretty cool. OnePlus has said that this is so tight, this seam here, that it is capable of holding a piece of paper. We have a piece of paper. We're gonna insert the paper. Yeah, that's wild, actually. That is a tight hinge. It helps that the phone is, is lightweight or lighter weight than other folding devices, but also that is a tight hinge. Cool. 
They've also inserted this piece here, and I talked about this in the initial exposure I had to the device. The hinge itself has this kind of bevel, which causes it to seal up so tightly in order to avoid particles from entering the space. Manufacturers are noticing that there are important design considerations that are exclusive to folding phones, and this is one of them. If you can stop things from entering in here, considering your softer displays on the inside of the device, from a long-term durability perspective, you wanna keep things off of there. Great about these folding phones at this point is as they slim down and become lighter, using them in their folded format actually does mimic the experience of a typical smartphone a lot better than it has in the past, and the behavior of your favorite apps and software will be identical to that of a typical smartphone in the folded state. I'll open up the cameras, I am curious. So this is your 24 millimeter stacked sensor, Sony's new sensor. Boom. Very uh, saturated, high contrast, and it has also figured out a way to not blow out the light areas, including the ceiling in this case. So if we move to 0.6, this is the equivalent 14 millimeters. 3X is where we top out optically and then 6X, we're doing sensor zoom. So quite a bit of camera versatility. I think the main advantage here is just having a true zoom lens on a folding device. Of course, these look even better when I max them out to the full display here. And you see, you start to understand the benefits of a folding device when you open up that internal display. You say, man, if you're just looking at pictures, it's a totally different experience on this display than it is on the external one. And this is the part, whenever I move away from folding phones, this is the part that I obviously miss as well. By the way, their interface, they've spent a lot of energy here. I give you some aspects that really make sense sense on a folding phone, including that taskbar that you notice there. If I'm just over here and I tap anywhere, I'm gonna get this taskbar on the bottom so I can quickly switch between apps because I've got more real estate to work with. All right, now as far as video goes, we got Snapdragon 8 Gen 2. We can uh, shoot all the way up to 4K 60. Of course, we've also got a variety of settings for stability, including ultra steady. However, that will adjust our resolution. We're just gonna shoot here in uh, 1X, 4K 60, and the audio that you're hearing is coming through the device as well. And I will do my usual um, go and talk to Mo because actually, believe it or not, he Stop. he's actually prepared something. No, come on. Um, <laughs> no, no, the thing from before. What thing from before? It's a test, Mo. This is a. <laughs> right, okay. This is what people do, right? Right. right? They How's analyze the definition and sharpness and you contrast. See my yeah, and the beards and everything. So it's good stuff. And obviously the audio as well. So that's why you need to say something. Oh, like and subscribe this video. Yeah, do that. All right, get back to the table. Well, you can't subscribe to a video. <laughs> So obviously we have all types of settings in the camera app, including the pro section if we want to get wild and start to dial in our ISO or our white balance to a particular color temperature. We can shoot in RAW or RAW Plus to portrait mode, Hasselblad, partnership, and then in the more section here, we also have night mode, dual view video, long exposures, we have slow motion, all the features you would expect to find on a flagship device. Now I am curious about what they're calling their uh, spatial audio triple setup. Patterns are for each one is going to be a spot for a weight that I need. <laughs> the magnets already. So, this is obviously working best in this orientation because we've got our speaker grills in that case on our left and right channel. So, it's giving you that stereo separation, which is legitimate on a folding phone. Like, sure, you can have it on your regular non folding phone and it can help to enhance the experience. But the more separate those become and the fact that we can have multiple grills here, it just gives you typically a better multimedia experience than what you can get on a standard non folding phone. It is loud, it's extremely clear. I should probably play some music. And don't get me started as well on the split keyboard, like super comfortable. If you're typing anything long, we've got nice haptics here as well. Listen, if you're like a power user and you do a lot of stuff on your phone, you watch a lot of video, I mean like there's really no experience like the folding phone at the moment. The difference has been that you've had a bit of a brick in your pocket. Companies are working on that. Like they're really trying to make these things thinner and lighter and more similar to slab style smartphones. Uh, congrats to OnePlus. I think they put together like a pretty compelling package here as far as 
folding smartphones are concerned. And the main thing is we've now got a new player in the game putting pressure on all the other manufacturers. Obviously, I'd like to use this more extensively and I will, uh, but there you have it. That is the OnePlus Open. Don't forget to let me know in the comments which one you would pick out of the green or black. It is emerald or it is Voyager. Which one would you guys go for?